Hey, it's Don, the auction professor. Today, I'm going to do another what sold on eBay. Pretty much everything I'm going to show you, I pretty much paid a dollar for or less. No exaggeration. You've seen my prices. You've seen me out in public buying these at those prices. So if you want to make a lot of money, pay as little as you can for the items that you buy. Just make sure they're decent items. Let's hop over there right now and show you some of the awesome items we sold this past week. Now, here we are at the first item, a postcard. I sell postcards every single day of my life and many, not just a couple, but many postcards every single day. It all adds up. This one here is from a series and the purchaser bought several different ones for me this time as well as in other trips also. This one did go for my asking price, $17.50. It's been up maybe two months. Second one that he bought. I think he bought a third or fourth one as well. I just grabbed a few. Here's a lot of Cracker Jack prizes. I've had these up for maybe four or five months, which is about 10 or so cents worth of listing fees when you have an anchor store. No deal, no big deal at all. Bought in a big bunch. I've got pennies into these. In all honesty, I've probably paid for them because some of the items from the same lot sold pretty much immediately. I took $17.50 on these. As I said, I do mark many items up. Average price in a group like this is probably about 10 bucks. So, you know, know your numbers, know what you're selling, and know what you can get out of them. You're going to maximize your profit. Having multiple items in the same niche is a huge plus also because you get up sales from them, basically, by selling more than one item to the same person. People buying this are collectors, and they're going to want not just these, but many other items. Next one here is a roller skating label. It did sell for $34.50. It does have even a little chip out of the side, if you can see it right there on the left, and some staining and such forth. It's a real nice example, $34.50 sold straight out. Record here, I took $46.50 on this one. This is East River Drive. It's from the local area. It's a Seoul. T-Town is a known label, um, the Toledo area. D-Town is Detroit. It's all kind of linked together here, all of these records. Motown and, and uh, Toledo, Ohio areas had some similar Seoul records as well. East River Drive is a known one. Pop Psych has prices for these, as does eBay. This is probably one of the top dollar ones of this one here. I priced it higher than it had sold for, I think, in record. So I'm very happy with the price on this one. This is a 50 cent purchase on this one here. Next one here is a luggage label. I sold about 20 of these in this past week. One person said they had some mad money and they wanted to spend it and they bought a bunch of these. And then I've had three more people come in and do the same thing. Now, I didn't have offers on any of them. They bought them straight out at my asking price. Um, some of these are harder to get than other ones. Uh, it's something that I always, always look for. Articles of luggage, if it's the right kind of luggage, can still sell for some good money with the labels on them as well. Not everyone will sell, but once you get to know the style, the type of luggage you want these labels on, you can also do money in those. So, 1450. Next one's uh, some stamps here now. I'm going to be talking a little more about these for those in Patreon. You're going to see a little touch on these as well as some other ones that I sold. I took 45 on these. Um, have literally nothing into them at this point, but just a real nice example of some uh, St. Louis World's Fair poster stamps. So 45 bucks on those. Now here's a postcard, real photo, real picture postcard. It has uh, Jimmy Stewart, James Stewart on it, and Arthur Kennedy. It's from a Western they were both in. This is a Dutch card. I talk about these quite often. I believe I took like 18 bucks on this one. This person bought several cards, all of the Western line, one larger format, the 4x6, and I believe this one's the 3.5x5.5 version. There's two different versions. Even in the 30s, they had larger size cards. They were like deluxe, rack, international style cards for the most part. Next one's some sheet music. Um... Edward Skedden, and I'm not sure who that even is. I did look it up and see that it was Navy back in the day, but besides the point, it's Old Glory. It's uh, preparing for World War One, and I sold this one for $34.50. Here's an old photo of some dancers, Dance Marathon. This one did sell for $57.50. I've got about a quarter into this one. I bought a whole mess of photos, and there was all kinds of stuff mixed into there. Average price, uh, if I average it out as a quarter piece I have into any of these items here, these style of photos that I had. So $57.50, I'm very happy with that. My list price. Here is an old um, Lutheran book here, Christian Religious, 1857. Uh, it's by T. Newton Kurtz. 
most of the time I just list these on uh, eBay. I don't have as much luck on the school and the religious books on Amazon. So these go over here. Now, if this was a early edition of like psychology or physics or math from 1860s, like Ray's mathematics or something, I would have listed that on Amazon and it would have probably sold very quickly. But these catechisms ones just don't go very well for me, at least on uh, Amazon. Most people buying religious items either want the jewelry pieces themselves or a new condition book because most people would buy this for a collectible. So 1857 book, you know, so anyway, and it's mostly in German if I'm not mistaken as well too. So, and I got roughly 25 bucks out of this one shipped. So, and it's medium mail, I believe it was one pound. So less than three bucks. Now here is a freebie. Now, this one had some broken records in it when I was searching through. I showed him it said, hey, the records are broken. I don't want it. And he asked if you want it. You can just have the, the folder. And I thought about it for a second and said, sure. So I took this folder. I listed it for $18.50, and I sold it for $10. Now, before you sell something like this, I'll give you a big warning. Make sure you do a counter offer, even at their same offer price, and state that you want to make sure they understand that the records are not included. I've run into that issue once or twice before, and it's happened as well on the dust jackets, because I just sell dust jackets. I've had hundreds and hundreds of just empty dust jackets from 1920s books all the way up into the 60s or thereabouts. I still have a bunch to list, but dust jackets, you run into the same thing as the order it expecting to have the book with, and they don't read the description. So every time I get an offer on something like this, I always counter back and state, hey, it doesn't include the records. It's just making it a little safer on you. Because in, in a couple of occasions, I've had the person say, oh, thank you for letting me know. I didn't didn't realize that. And in other cases, when they, they did realize that this, thanks for letting me know. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to find out that you were interested in knowing that I understood the listing. So it, it was worded differently. But the point is that that's how it comes off when you send something like that. So 10 bucks for something free. Newspaper, I've got maybe 50 cents into this. And I sold this one for $15 plus shipping, so they spent $3.79 to ship it and 15 bucks on it. 50 cents I have invested into it. It's been up for two years, so with that, I've got about a dollar into it. So I made, after all said and done, even photographic time and such worth about 12 bucks on it. So long tail items aren't a huge ordeal because stuff like this sells in multiples all day long. Now, here's Chattanooga Choo Choo by Glenn Miller. And this is a call out to the Patreon. So, nice sale here on this one. Um, $17.50 plus shipping on this. Um, I might have been able to get a little more on this one, but there's some label issues in the condition. If it was E minus to E, I would have definitely gotten my $24 or $50. But again, the label has issues with it. I'm very um, considered of that when someone's making an offer. So I could have countered. I literally took the offer when it came in without countering it, just because I look at the label. There's a black dot smudge underneath the E and the U. It even damages part of the U and part of the bird's damaged. And then you've got the white flecking. And then there's a spot where it looks like a label was too. It's got some smudges on it. Label is important on these two. So, and I judge them by that. So keep that in mind. For some people, if it's such a rare record, it's not going to matter, but good example here. Now, these I showed in a haul not too long ago. Just some Power Rangers, Zord parts. I don't even know what they go to. I never collected Power Rangers. I don't know anything about Power Rangers other than the toys, enough to know which ones are good and bad. I bought a bag of parts, and in a, maybe it was 50 cents or something. I'd have to go back and look at my records, or it's in the video, I'm sure, but... Um, I sold these for, I think, eighteen fifty plus seven thirty two for shipping. So I'm well covered on this one. I'm very happy with that. Parts, pieces, whatever the case may be, I buy them all. So I, I figured these had to be worth something with, with that uh, Power Ranger tie. And it looks to be for a big, large one. It has some sort of weird chain with it also, which just not something I see. Now, this is a Ralston Purina Corn Checks Mail Away scarecrow now it doesn't say ralston perina on it i've just had a couple of these before and instantly knew what it was and this was advertised as a wizard of oz piece which it very well is not totally wrong character uh there was a tv commercial with this character in it so if that gives you an idea it did sell for 27.50 no arguments first night up it's not in mint condition it had some some issues uh for what it is it's in decent condition uh, sold on the high end as well. These average 15, 20 bucks. So, you know, very happy with that. 
you price right, you, you, you get some decent images, it sells it. This image here attracts. This is a very drawing image. It would follow all standards even to go up on, on um, Amazon. I might have needed to whiten the background, but I usually do that if I'm uh, on transfer process. So anyway... So anyway, get something big and, and uh, attractive to bring the folks in on something like this. This That really sold this. Even if somebody didn't know Ralston Perina, the image and the gallery image on eBay brought them in. If this hits up on Google, this is going to be a big search in the, the scarecrow section. Again, if you watching what your sales are coming from, where your sales are coming from on eBay, you'll realize that more and more of your sales are coming from off-site and most off-sites are Google Chrome searches that are pulling it in. eBay is doing a lot of advertising and pulling people in. I hear radio commercials all the time. I don't watch normal TV but I've been told there's a bunch of eBay commercials out there right now on cable and such forth so they're doing stuff. Uh, now here's a 737 advertising promotional pin. It's a tail fin with their you know 737 logo on it. 1450. This is one of those things I bought in a big bag of just junk, basically, pins and stuff. This might even came from Savers from a couple years ago. I've got about 75 cents into listing it. I would say nothing into purchasing it. Uh, and that 75 cents is max because if it's in my first 10,000, it's like two cents to list a month. 1450 plus they spent 366 shipping. I'm making about 10 or 12 dollars profit basically on this. So. And it's, it's literally nothing. I don't care if they sit for a while. The stuff sells constantly. I've never had an issue with stuff like that. Very few things I take down anymore at all. Just because the rate of items that we're selling lately that have been up for a longer time are just increasing. I'm selling as much of the new items that I, that I do of old items. And the new items usually sell 3 to 5% the very first day I list them up. So I'm selling a pretty good decent amount across the board. And I really chalked it up to more advertising from eBay, more and better, I should say, search results on Chrome or Google. So I really think that's a key. And doing the 30-day uh, listings does help as well. And I just let them run. So, you know, I haven't had any issues. My sales are up from when we switched over to everything running on a 30-day auto relist on eBay with nothing other than that. I'm perfectly happy with it. Now, the next one's an engraved card. This is a full-fledged engraving. You could feel the ink on the paper and then it was hand colored this would date to about 1850s late 1850s early 1860s that's when a lot of these came, came about it's about the size of a poster stamp as well this person bought several of these and they've been back probably once a month for the last four months they'll spend like 40 bucks or so on average at a time and you'll see that once a month somebody will spend some of their extra cash after the bills are paid I can almost set my clock to certain days of the month that this kind of thing happens. There's usually a day or two of the month towards the end of the month where I'll sell, you know, sometimes twice what I normally do on those days or the rest of the days of the month. So nice, good example here. Here's a ticket. I took 175 on this one. This is the Louisiana Purchase uh, Exposition, 1904, 175. Very happy with it. It has some issues. Somebody probably had it in their pocket. looks like maybe it got wet at some time. I'm fine with the price. Nice, interesting piece. It's used. You can see a date. You can see a signature. This was only available to people that worked there. So like a bonus, a plus. Now, if this was a regular World's Fair ticket, it probably wouldn't have went for as much because those are more common. The employee workman's tickets like this one are scarcer. So I talk about tickets. Tickets always do well for us. Here's a print ad, Health Food Company, 1750. Straight out, no offer, nothing. They just bought it just the way you see it. Tiny label, it's about an inch and maybe a third, maybe an inch and a quarter uh, tall by just over a quarter inch. It did sell for $9.50. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. I have zero into this. I've got hundreds more of various labels from this same assortment from a printing company. And we've been selling these left and right. So I'm just blowing them out at this point because I've got just tons of labels, hundreds of these again. And I've got another assortment that I just purchased from an advertiser as well. These things go very well. People will put these back on a bottle. This is a legit original foil label, Dresden, I would say, as well. It's a New York company, so just something to look for on these. Don't discourage these little tiny items. This takes nothing to photograph or to scan. You can put these on a flatbed and scan like 50 individual labels with one scan, 
and then just crop around them when you, it's time to list them. So use that same image over and over and over again and just crop the one you want. It's one scan. It takes no time at all. It really cuts your time down. And if you've got a, a decent sized scanner, the regular size, at least eight and a half by 11, as I said, you can fit 40 of these on the scanner at one time. It, it, it's a big improvement over any other abilities. Now, this one was taken with a photograph. We don't do it that way anymore. We've played around with what's the fastest way. And we can cut the time down in half across the board by just one big scan of all of them at the same time. So anyway, you've got to set the DPI up on that, though. Just keep that in mind. We usually run 600 DPI when we're scanning. Um, this is a interesting card. The black cards, the black background cards with the silver... It's interesting that they do it as a burial supply, casket trimmings, and undertaker supply, just because it's kind of morbid to begin with. But I guess if you're only marketing towards the undertaker's field, it may be why that they've got this morbidity to it. So I've seen some that had coffins on them that, that were coffin manufacturers. I always look for this sort of stuff, though. Size-wise, it's close to a postcard size. I talk about that all the time. This one went for 40 bucks plus they paid shipping on these. I love these sort of things. It's, it's kind of quaint. They're historic. A lot of undertakers, even to this day, may still collect this sort of items just because there's not a huge assortment of these type of things around. So, anyway, here's a reel-to-reel. -reel. I took 26 and some change, just under 27 bucks on this one here. Perfectly fine with it. You saw me purchase this one along with like 30 or 40 more for five bucks for all of them. We've made like almost 700 off of that five dollar purchase on these. Now these are getting harder to find, but I still turn them up at least once, maybe twice a month on average. The classic ones sell very, very well. Uh, not as high as classic rock, but I always mess with the classical. Most people leave these behind thinking classical isn't worth a ton of money. Look up living stereo and orchestra, those terms on pop psych or something, and you'll see what I mean. Now here is a toy, like a knockoff of Rubik's Cube from the 80s. This is an original one. I took 15 bucks plus shipping on it. An original one in the box only goes for 15 to say 30 bucks, depending on the version of it. So 15 bucks, I'm fine. It's not the biggest unit of it. It's been open. It's not sealed. Box has some issues as well. So, you know, I'm fine. That's a fair offer that they took. I didn't even counter back. I've got maybe a dollar or less into this, so I'm making 12 bucks on it. I know, again, 12 bucks isn't huge, but when you average selling so many items a day, it, it doesn't really matter. That's, that's not a, a point. And even with labor and time, I'm still making almost 12 bucks. So, you know, it's 12 bucks that... I wouldn't have otherwise so now here's some refrigerator filters from whirlpool now if i remember right these are gated on amazon um i think this variety maybe was i think that's why i put it here um but again i sold them for 34.50 the person who purchased these up these or wanted to pay for the priority so i just threw them in a priority box you know flat rate for 15 and off they went they paid shipping of course 34.50. I've got maybe five bucks into all three of these. It's one sealed pack of two, and then one single one also. So now I've shown these forks and stuff that I've had before. I had five of these. One person bought one for 25, and the other four sold for 20 bucks a piece. I paid a dollar each for these, so I have five bucks into this, and my return on that is 105 bucks for my five bucks for these five forks here they're bone handle just standard bovine bone original uh iron it's a really interesting piece i buy every one of these that I, I run into every single one three times as long as they're vintage originals you're gonna have to get the hang of what's vintage and what's not but these sell very well for us i've sold probably 60 maybe even 70 three-time forks in the last two or three years that's not an exaggerated figure so roughly 20 23 24 uh year i sell of these twice a month on average so i just don't hit as many in the markets as much anymore i don't need to you know do the footwork as much as i used to now here's a uh, movie songbook sheet music book for on the beach it has gregory peck and anthony perkins in it which i'm sure is the bigger push fred astaire great um this one sold for full price 37.50 most of these movie related sheet music books i sell 30 on up on average for any decent one now this is a book it's not just necessarily a a sheet 
it has multiple songs or um, performances in it that they would uh, you'd be able to play. If you don't know who Steve Allen is, Steve Allen wrote this too. Steve Allen's a very well-known musician, singer, and comedian also. So, anyway, now National Geographic. We sold two or three of these in the past week. Full price, no offer taken, eleven ninety nine. I paid, oh geez, maybe a nickel a piece for about sixty, seventy of these. Maybe all World War Two era. I try to stick to World War Two only because those sell the best because of the the illustrations or people collect them during the war or there's a war topic in it they want to put together for a display or something along that line so so i don't really worry about these sitting for a little while they always sell and again multiples of these sell a month every single month of my life pretty much we replenish these as well so when i run up on on big lots of these I'll save just these, and sometimes the rest of them, even in the 50s, will rip off the back cover and just recycle the rest of them and sell the back cover Coca-Cola ads on the back of these. That's usually about the easiest way to do it. I know people say don't rip up stuff, but it's not worth much to me, and it's my purchase. So at the end of the day, if I can get some money out of just selling Coke ads, I sell them as Coke ads too. So let's move on here. Another print ad. Now, this one I went back and forth, and I ended up getting around 28 bucks for this one here. It's somebody I've done business with before, so I didn't want to quibble too much. He's, he does uh, multiple purchases from me usually, and he's been purchasing for, I don't know, 9, 10 months, maybe 12 months. It, it helps to memorize or know some of the names of the people that buy from you and just send a nice, hey, thanks for the continued support when, when stuff's going on. Another thing I do when people do multiple purchases and they pay immediately whether they ask or not, I always refund the difference through PayPal. I'll just refund them so it'll show up as a partial refund so they'll know about it instantly as well. With a little note, thanks, we always combine, blah, 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 and basically let them know that anytime they do this, not to worry, that I will go ahead and refund them. And in the past, I've had people uh, say they were hesitant to buy other items because they weren't aware of whether I would combine and refund and they didn't want to mess with sending it through their phone. Just another example of another way to help boost your sales and stuff. So, Stare at Tools. This is a catalog. Um, it, the cover was loose. It had some issues to it. You can see where the cover is rippled up there. You can see the damage to it as well here. It was complete. It was all intact. Uh, I literally try to list everything that's wrong with it and be very detailed in the description. This person left awesome feedback. They bought it straight out at 75 bucks. I have like 50 cents to a dollar into this. This one came from a purchase from a garage. And I bought every piece of paper they had in the garage for one lump sum. So that's somewhere in the ballpark. I'd have to go back and do the math on how many pieces. One piece wasn't worth selling. So it has to adjust my per item cost on that. But it's it's you know less than a dollar. So 75 bucks, it was up for about two hours. And if you look up the price on these two, that's way over what these have been selling for, too. I believe the last one sold for like 45 or 50 bucks. Again, don't quote me on that, but um, that's about the range it was, if I remember right. So, you know, I, I try to price them higher than most, and most people don't research it. It's why RA works. That's why retail arbitrage works for people. People don't research the items, and they just want it, or they see it on Amazon, and they instantly just buy it. So now here's a 8x10. I, yeah, this is a new one. We just listed this about, say, four days ago. It sold um, just a few nights ago, if I remember right. 5750 straight out. They bought two of these at that price. So I've gotten almost nothing into these. I purchased these in bulk. I have hundreds, and I think I've showed the stack last time, but it's a stack of photos about that thick, all 8x10 promotionals and advertising stuff. We have probably maybe 2,000 photos up, maybe, maybe more than that, just on eBay alone. I've probably got about 5,000 8x10s in stock. Movie-related ones I sell, um, TV-related, uh, military, or even travel or tourist type of things also. So good price on that one. And the next one is a low, cheapy... Um, kids book it's uh let's see what was it rudolph the red nose ranger now the photos are terrible on the site this one's been up for about two and a half years and as i said before we're not fixing all the photos until they're ready to cross list somewhere else um, just because it doesn't make sense to go back in what we're gonna have to do some 
meandering around on you know, cross listing anyway. So, and it sold for fourteen fifty. I had a bunch of these. You can see number one in the title. That's usually what I do when I have multiples of the same one. Now, I, you you're technically allowed in some categories on not necessarily this item, but some items to do a category variation um, for the condition. I just list them no matter what as separate auctions. I'm not worried about saving the, the nickel it, it, it cost me because I can move the words around sometimes or I can just put one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever in the title, depending on how many of these I had. And this is one that I run across fairly often. So I usually at the end of the day don't end up trashing these listings and I'll just save the listing as well too. just add new photos to it, especially like on Amazon, because you can list these over and over again from the same listing. Just upload a new photo so you don't have to type anything. It's really easy to do it that way on Amazon, at least for, for me it is. And the last one here, now I talked about this on Dom's show with Chris, uh, Primetime Treasure Hunters channel as well as Chris the thrift shop hustler we're on uh, Dom's channel and we talked about our mistakes for the week I sold this record it's been up for I, I don't really remember the exact length but it's not been up for quite some time and you know I salvaged this from a dirty old barn and had to crawl through mud to get some of these and it's a historical piece I listened to part of it just to make sure it was okay because this is uh, my family was Polish on one side so I grew up listening to a lot of Polish music and polkas so I was just curious you know but anyway, I set it down after it sold. I went to get a box and stuff. I got sidetracked from a phone call. And I came back and set a box on it at the edge of the table and it broke both records. I was more worried about disappointing my, my buyer as well as the, the loss historical of, of a vintage item like this than anything. I immediately emailed him how sorry I was and, and literally told him the truth. I broke it. You know, I messed up. I, I totally messed up. And he's totally able to leave negative feedback on it too I uh, you know so I just left it at that I offered him a discount on um, another item as well as, as free shipping on anything else he finds now or in the future I told him just to let me know I won't forget because it's the only one I ever broke so I really doubt I'm gonna forget that but in the end of the day if you look he left me good feedback still so you know I, I'm very happy with with the outcome at least on this I'm I'm saddened that the the record got broken you know it's not a big loss because I got a dollar or less into this thing as well. I, I would have had 40 more bucks back out of it. But, you know, there's there's another day. I'll run into one of these again, and, you know, maybe I'll still have his information around. So you can save some things like this. And, you know, and, and in all honesty, too, I didn't even ask him to cancel the sale after the fact um, because I don't want to hassle the guy anymore. And it's going to save me, what, a nickel and some fees on it. I just let it go so I'm not hassling or bothering the guy. Be, be the, the best business you can and don't come back and ask for you know him to do something. I've already inconvenienced him. He's shot out his money. His bank has that money withdrawn out of it. Yeah, I've already done some sort of financial stress to someone when I sell something and they pay for it and then I can't send it out. So I'm not going to go bother him again just because it's, it's less time consuming. So when they do that after an item's arrived and it's only been three or four days, it really kind of aggravates me in, in some aspects of it. Now, if I cancel the listing, I'll get my fees back on that $40. I take it as a penalty personally for damaging the records because I don't want that to ever happen again as well too. So that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas on these, hopefully some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.